Hello and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses. Now, over two years ago, we introduced you to the Hisung GV125S. And since then, there's been a bit of a yearning for something more. Well, Hisung have risen to the occasion and done exactly that. So today, I'm bringing you more. Let's roll the intro and get cracking. Now on first glance at looking at this bike, it could be mistaken for a GV125 until you look a bit closer at the side panel. See that? GV300S. You see it? Small, isn't it? Come in for a closer look. Like the 125 version, the engine in this 300 is a liquid called 60 degree V twin. Except this one is 296 cc's and develops 29 brake horsepower and 18.8 pounds foot of torque. The gearbox is six speed, fuel tank holds 12 and a half litres, it's got the typical Delphi AFI system and the top speed is reportedly to be 90 miles an hour, possibly a little bit more. Wheels are cast alloy, 15 inch rear with a 150 tin sum tyre and 16 inch on the front with a 120 tin sum tyre. Brakes are ABS with a 270mm front disc and quad piston caliper and a 260mm rear disc with a double piston caliper. The GV300 is typically sized at just under 2.1 metres long, 750 millimetres wide and just over 1 metre tall. Seat height 740 millimetres and with my feet on the footrest, remember I am 5 foot 10 and a half with a 31 and a half inch inside leg um, and it feels very comfortable. My knee is at a right angle and uh, if I can just put it on the side here and with my legs up it feels very bobberish. Does that make sense? It feels like a bobber should feel. Um, your knees are higher typically than uh, being on a road bike or a cruiser type bike where your legs would be like this. And I like the position. It's very comfortable. My arms are not overstretched. My legs certainly are not stretched. And uh, the seat is extremely comfortable and very forgiving in the posterior department. At 172 kilos, it is a decent weight, but don't forget the 125 version was only 10 kilograms lighter. So take that into consideration. It's not that heavy at all. When you're maneuvering the bike in this seated stationary position, it feels very easy to put over and it doesn't feel as though it's heavy at all. Now that a lot of it is down to the low center of gravity with the engine low down here, spread out and the bike's quite wide. Um, it certainly isn't a chunker, that's for sure. And I'm hoping when we're out on the road that will transfer into the riding experience as well. But we shall certainly find that out very, very soon. So then let's take it for a ride.
Right, so here we go. Pulling away. All right, well, initial. Tiny bit of snap, a little bit snappy. Um, other than that, very light clutch, very light indeed. And the bike feels really light, to be honest. Doesn't feel heavy at all. Certainly doesn't feel like 172 kilos. Pulls away nice and smooth. Good positive gear change. I quite like that. Into sixth. So that's 37 miles an hour at three and a half thousand RPM. Okay. Now that clutch is very light. Uh, as I say, when you accelerate, you get a little bit of uh, snappiness from the free play there. But other than that, it pulls pretty responsively. Bear in mind it's a 300, not a 650 or a 1000 cc. Seat, comfortable. Um, and quite soft actually. I don't know whether this is uh, any different to the standard seat because obviously this has got the upgraded seat but other than that feels okay so far. My worry is I'm going to run out of fuel. Okay brakes, ABS of course and they feel pretty good. That van is too far over so I can't get down the middle there, typical. Dash is quite easy to see. Speedo is very prominent in the middle there. smooth burble from that uh, V-twin. Everything feels quite comfortable. I mean fifth gear already, that feels a bit weird. Being in fifth gear at 40 miles an hour. It's not a bad thing. It just feels weird for a 300cc. Obviously it'll do more in each gear, but uh, are the lights on? No, there they are. The dash is quite easy to see, as I say, the um, speedo is easy, rev counter, I like the mixture of the analog and the digital there, I quite like that. Uh, visibility from the mirrors, right, okay, well, the way they are at the moment, uh, angled in so I can see something behind me, I've got 50% of arm. Um, the right hand side, funny enough, seems better than the left hand side, I wonder if I can adjust that. I just got moving arm a little bit to see behind me, but other than that, it's all right. Same with that one. So it's about 30% um, obscured, but I can still see quite well behind me. Brakes are very good actually. ABS brakes, very responsive, pull up quite nicely. Once we're up to a bit of speed, we'll see how those brakes respond then. Dips into the corners nicely. It's quite quiet. I think uh, an aftermarket exhaust would be beneficial. But those that like a quiet bike, this is probably ideal for you. But it is a smooth gear change. It's not clunky, it's not wallowy, it's quite positive. I have seen a, uh, a foreign review where they were saying that um, it isn't. I wonder if they got a, um, a well thrashed press bike, but this one seems absolutely fine to be honest. Uh, the switch gears are very minimalist. I say switch gears, you've literally got one switch gear and a start button with an on off switch that looks a little bit cheap like I say but uh, it's okay I mean it does what you're supposed to do it's got an on off switch and a start button as long as it works which it does horn beeps good I need to stop and get some jungle juice That rumble, I think, is from that nice V8 uh, 5 litre BMW in front of me. Nice. Let's open my visor so you can have a nice listen to it. 
Yeah, that sounds nicer than this does. But it is a 5 litre V8, so what do you expect? Takes the corners very nicely, actually. Nice and smooth. Um, I would say, perhaps, it's a little bit harsh on the rear end of the suspension there. And, to be honest, on the front of the suspension. Um, at these low speeds, but it might be like uh, other bikes that we've ridden. Um, harsher on slow speeds, softer at higher speeds. But again, we shall find that out momentarily. Right, I'm going to get some go go juice and um, I shall see you on the flip side. Oh my god, I'm sounding so American. 10 4 good buddy. Pig, oh no, yeah. Hmm, snappy on that roundabout, you see that? A little bit snappy. Coming through, yeah, I got right away. Which way are you going? Okay, I'm going to have this one over here. Best thing about being on the bike, you can get what you want, where you want, without having to worry about sides. Well, that was silly, wasn't it? I left my wallet at the shop and uh, I only had four pound on me and I put six pound fuel in and uh, didn't have enough to pay. So they have to issue me a 24 hour default notice. I've got 24 hours to pay it. I've never done that in my uh, 30 odd years of driving. I've been driving since uh, 1991. It's the first time I've ever been to a petrol station without having enough money to pay for the fuel. What a bell end. So this is going to be a good test. We're going to go onto the real carriageway, take it up to 70 and see how it performs. See how smooth it is. I hope you can hear me on the microphone because um, this roof helmet is not the uh, best. But let's find out, shall we? So again, into the corner quite nicely. Nice and smooth. Onto the dual carriageway. In fourth gear at the moment. Up to 70, into 6th, and it will do more. Top speed is supposed to be 90, possibly more, and I think this feels like it could definitely do it, because it got me up to 70, no problem. Changing down the gears is nice. So nice, a little bit of snap, to say, from that gear. As you ease off the revs and then go back on the revs, you get a little bit snappy. So around this bottom roundabout, it uh, leans over quite well, hugs the road quite nicely. These uh, tyres are doing very well indeed. Back up to speed. Didn't quite go in fourth there when I wanted to. Okay, so 70 miles an hour in sixth gear. Stability wise, not a problem. Feels nice and stable. It does feel comfortable. I'm not being banged around and this is not a very good road either. So it's actually quite forgiving. It's taking the lumps and bumps very nicely. Wind obviously is hitting you full in the body. But again, it is quite a windy day, so it's actually not that bad at all. Now, I do want to add that I put E10 fuel in this, because that's all they seem to be doing in the supermarkets these days, around this area anyway. So, it'll be quite interesting to see through this test ride how that performs. Okay, now I've stopped. It doesn't like to go in neutral now. Come on, get in it. No, first. No, second. First. Second, roll it forward a bit. Come on. Right, I had to use my hand there. That's annoying. So, 
as you saw when I stopped there, the uh, problem I had was getting it from second into neutral or first into neutral. It kept wanting to go first, second, first, second, first, second, first, second. Uh, I tried it a couple of times. The second time it got into neutral, then when I let go of the clutch, it jolted forward so it wasn't actually in neutral. So that's something I don't like. Um, other than that, it rode really smoothly and now we're on these uh, back roads um, doing 40 miles an hour and uh, it is uh, nice and smooth as I say, absorbing the bumps very nicely. It's just about to rain by the looks of it, which is nice. But yeah, I like this. It's very relaxing. Turns into the corners quite well. So I just pulled into stop just there, put it into neutral from second whilst I was still coasting to a stop and it was fine. So uh, that's the trick. Okay, so, what do I think? Quick sum up. Well, the ride is great. I absolutely love the ride. It is smooth, it pulls away nicely, it's got plenty of poke, it gets up to speed, 70 and beyond. Um, I'm guessing it will get to the uh, maximum speed we mentioned before, probably. Um, but uh, yeah, and it does that quite nicely. Um, Definitely smoother at faster speeds than it is at slower speeds. Definitely. It's not horrible, it's not uncomfortable, but you can feel a little bit of a jitter at lower speeds, but that smooths out quite nicely at higher speeds. Um, my only real negative is the getting it into neutral. That's a nightmare. Um, you pull up to a junction, it's second into first. Out of probably 10 times, twice, I've managed to get it into neutral. Uh, and one of those times it said neutral and then it jolted forward like it wasn't in neutral. So that definitely needs sorting out. Other than that, I don't see any issues whatsoever. The ride is comfortable, the grips, they're okay. When you get up to the top speed, you can feel a little bit of buzz through the grips. Maybe a softer padded one would be nicer. Um, nothing major, just softer rubber would probably be a bit nicer on the hands when you're doing 70 mile an hour for a long period of time. Uh, the foot pedal um, arrangement is exactly where it should be. It feels nice and comfortable. The seat is lovely. But as I say, I do not know if that is to do with this seat or to do with the seat in general because I haven't tried the standard seat. Um, the mirrors are decent. I can see out of them, no problem at all. Um, the dash, very easy to see. The brakes are very good. I really do like them. Um, quite sharp, so when you pull up, oh, it's definitely quite sharp, but again, that's just a little bit of getting used to. Um, the only other downside, I would say, is uh, when you're coming down through the gears and then you go to pull away again, it's a bit oh, a bit jittery, so like it, um, there's a tiny pause and then it goes. Uh, but again, that's getting used to, and I suppose feathering the clutch might solve that, but again, I would expect it to be a little bit smoother than that. Other than that, as a package, it's lovely and from a, a leap up from the 125 fantastic I think you'd absolutely love it if you like this bobber style of bike it's brilliant low seat height nice comfortable uh, smooth ride and um, nothing else negative to say about it at all really uh, the tires grip really well on the corners no dramas with those uh, Tim Sun tires and they perform really really well um, the wheels uh, are nice to look at, uh, the exhaust note, a little bit quiet for me, 
Maybe I'd expect something a bit uh, louder and a bit raspier, but uh, an aftermarket exhaust would probably fix that. Um, but the bike's not out yet, but we'll come to that in a minute. Um, other than that, no dramas whatsoever. So with that said, let's get back to the yard. Although this bike has a nicely stitched brown and black seat, it is an optional extra, as is the rack, the front headlight grille, these levers, and the bar risers. And I've seen on the manufacturer's website in Korea that they should also be producing engine bars as an aftermarket extra, an exhaust guard down here, um, the different side panels you can get, and possibly pannier bags. And I've also seen a third party aftermarket exhaust upgrade, which makes it sound a bit beefier. And although they described it on their website as making it sound a bit like a Harley, I'm not so sure. A 300 is gonna be very difficult to make sound like a Harley. It's when people who own a V6 Mustang change the exhaust and say, it sounds just like a V8. No, it doesn't. But it certainly does sound better. But I don't think that's a higher sung part. I think that's from a third party manufacturer. But we will see. Now, much like the 125 version, the bike is still very good looking and very bobber esque. I'm still myself not convinced about this gap. I think they should have just finished the tank off to here or made the seat slightly longer. I don't know about this gap. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below if you like the gap or if you think you should put the gap in. Anyway, other than that, I love the design of it. I love the feel of it. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. I love the way it rides. Um, now, don't forget, this is built to a budget and I'll tell you the price in a second. But uh, I think for the price, it is extremely well built and a very good bike indeed. Now, especially if it's an A2 upgrade you're looking for, if you had the 125 and you want to upgrade but stick with the same style of bike, this is a perfect, perfect upgrade for you. If you like bobbers but you don't want a 125, again, something that will do 90 miles an hour, which is absolutely fine, especially on this style of bike, this, I think, is the perfect bike for you too. Um, I don't see anything really negative. Um, like we said before when we were riding, these switch gears are okay. They're better than the basic generic ones. They're not top quality like Triumph and stuff like that, but you're not paying Triumph money. I'm not too keen on this little switch. It's okay. It's not ridiculously cheap, but it's just a bit meh. Um, the Vibe you get from these grips, um, I think could be solved if you had softer grips. There is quite hard rubber. Um, so I think with softer grips, that would solve that problem. Um, the dash is okay, it serves a purpose. It's a basic looking dash. It's, you know, it does what it's supposed to do. You've got rev counter and everything else you need in the little display on there. Um, I like the way it's put together. I like the way it's finished off. Uh, they've used some really good quality materials in here. It's not cheap and chintzy, but um, it's not, you know, market leading, but then you're not paying market leading prices. So I think for what they've done, it is a very good quality bike and certainly a fantastic upgrade from a 125. Now, as we were saying on the ride there, you've got these standard front forks and the twin shocks on the back. Uh, lights are not LED as the indicators too. You've got standard bulbs in there. That means again, as you saw on the video, the lights are okay. They're not ridiculously uber bright, but they're bright enough. Um, I couldn't test it at night, so I can't show you that, but it's like a normal halogen bulb. You know, it works. It's just a normal bulb like you find in most bikes and cars that aren't LED. You know, same with the indicators, you know, they serve a purpose, they work. They show up, they're not ridiculously bright, but they work and they're bright enough. So what more can you ask for really? Um, I'll show you the headlight in close proximity. So there we go, headlight, main beam, flash, 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 <laughs> horn, horn, horn. 
That's loud. Cutout switch works too. Bargain. Now this bike is not available to buy yet. It should be out mid-September this year and the extra parts available should be available by Christmas this year. So let's hope so. Um, if you want to reserve one or if you want to put your name down for one then click the link in the description below and pop along to Lightning Storm Motorcycles and stick your name down for one. Price. Well the price should be just over £4,000 and I think that is a bargain. £4,000 for a 300cc A2 bike. Brilliant. Can't really say fairer than that. Absolutely 100% impressed with the price for what you get. Well done. Especially considering the 125 was just about 250 quid cheaper than that. Bargain, I would say. Absolute bargain. Well, let's see what the actual price is. When they say just over 4,000, do they mean 4,099? Or do they mean 4,499? We'll see. Even so, at four and a half grand, I don't think that's a bad value at all. What's more impressive is it comes with a three-year warranty. Now, for the first year, you get parts and labor warranty and 12 months roadside recovery assistance with the motoring organization, which is like the mortaring organization, but less brickwork. And years two and three is a parts only warranty, but it's still three years nonetheless. But there is something I am disappointed about more saddened than disappointed, they've got rid of the grey. The primer grey that I grew to love on the old Hyasung 125 is not available on this 300. No, they've got gloss black or matte black. Sorry, no, they've got diamond black or shadow black, which is gloss and matte. So black or black. It's like Henry Ford all over again. And there we go. That brings us to the end of this episode. Please let us know in the comment section below what you think of this bike and whether you will be getting your name down for one. Now, there is an alternative to this, I guess, perhaps the Honda Rebel, but that is a 500. And it's got that weird tank shape and you're a bit stretched and a bit sort of, oh, I don't really like that. What do you think? Let me know what you think of the design, the look, the feel. And if you've ridden one already, if you have, I'd like to know how, because it isn't out yet. But anyway, let us know in the comment section below your thoughts on the bike and if you'll be putting your name down for one. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Motors for the Masses. Thank you much for joining me. I'll be back next time with some other stuff. I don't want to say what because sometimes it changes. Things get sold or taken away or they don't arrive, which is more often the case. So um, yes, something surprising and exciting will be coming next. Stay tuned for that. Please like, subscribe and share this video and don't forget to click the bell for more videos. Pop along to our link for Patreon if you want to support this channel or our Facebook merchandise shop if you want to buy some merchandise or stuff. Other than that, I have nothing else to say. If I was to say one negative thing about this bike, however, it would have to be the gap. I don't like that gap. Other than that, I don't really have anything bad to say about it, other than the little niggly bits I mentioned on the ride. But then you make up your own mind as to what you expect and what you want from a bike. And someone keeps sending me messages and I apologise. It might be for my new outboard motor that I'm trying to get. I'll find out in a minute. So, enough waffle. Until next time, please ride and drive carefully, but have fun. Bye bye.